brand new replacement D300 steering servo in the VRX Bullet. Hi guys, Brett here from Hearns and today I'd like to talk to you about installing a new servo, a new steering servo into your VRX Bullet. So we were out at the track the other day and uh, yeah we, we had a few incidents um, and young, young BJ thought it was a good idea to keep driving it under one of the under the pipes um, until the steering servo cried no more. So it's had lots of runs now um, and it's probably, well it's definitely due for an upgrade because it simply is not working. So we're going to clarify that first, we're going to diagnose the problem and then we're going to go ahead and, and fix it. So let's get the body off and have a look. We'll get the body out of the way. So I'm going to turn the car on, it's plugged in, got my radio here, fabulous little radio these ones. You can see the steering is not responding yet yet the motor is so there's no noise there's no sound um, I'm going to go ahead and unplug this one now the one I'm replacing it with is a highest D300 uh, and this is something that we commonly use in our Tamiya get it going pack and a really good upgrade and replacement for pretty much any RC car okay so we've got signal positive negative and you can see straight away that we've got a bit of movement in conjunction so my suspicions were correct in that we've just managed to kill the servo so I'll go ahead switch it off unplug it and we'll get to work on changing it over okay so let's start by getting the uh, tornado battery out of the way these cars are ridiculously easy to work on which makes life really good um, I've got a little sort of booster wire that I engineered here for the servo we'll take that out get that out of the way there we go get the wire out and this one here uses a all-in-one well, commonly referred to as an all-in-one or two-in-one speed controller slash receiver so it makes the repair even more straightforward I've got my little nine steps toolkit here so I'm going to start by taking the top deck off Okay, so now I've got the top deck off and out of the way. I've put my screws down in, in order because there are a couple of different lengths here so I know which way they go. And that reveals us, got a little battery packing foam here. All we're left with now is the servo itself and the mounting ears. So I'm going to go ahead and take the linkage off the servo horn. Then after that I'm going to flip it over, get that screw here going to flip it over and get the legs out from the bottom of the chassis you can see by the marks on the bottom of the chassis that it's had lots of lots of use lots of track time lots of fun it's brought lots of joy and a simple little repair like this will not only upgrade it but we'll get it going better than ever okay so now those two screws are out you can see that we've got the servo out of the car and now it's a good time to check the steering linkage for anything that's bent or broken or binding and this one here is uh, is tip top and in good shape I'm going to go ahead and put the car itself to the side now and I'm going to get the steering the steering mounting points off of the servo the servo mounting points off of the servo just do one side at a time like for like so it all goes back together the way in which it came apart now these ones here have mounting lugs in the bottom of the chassis plate so what I'd like to do is do them up snug so they're located uh, and hold in form but so I can also line them up with the holes in the chassis plate 
like so. What I'll do is I'll dummy fit it and then take it out and secure all the screws and re-tighten it as needed. Last mounting bracket going on now onto the highest D300. Now the beauty in this servo is that for quite a very reasonably priced and entry level servo, it has really good performance. So this one has a transit time of 0 0.12 of a second. And that relates to the speed in which it goes from center to 60 degrees travel. And doing so will develop 7.7 .7 kilos. And that's the amount of torque in which it applies. And that is plenty for this two wheel drive buggy and most ready to run uh, applications. The thing that sets it apart, I suppose, in making it more of a entry level or cheaper servo is that it has uh, all plastic case, which is good, is actually quite resilient, um, and all plastic drivetrain in the gears which is not a bad thing either. Yes, they will uh, wear and potentially break, but you know what? They all, they all will at some point. Okay, so like I said, now that the mounting brackets are screwed onto the servo, I'm just gonna locate it into the chassis plate and make sure that it all locates, which it does. It sits nice and flat, again, which it does. So. Now I can go ahead and do up the screws nice and, thir nice and firm. Okay, so we've got two screws to put it back into the chassis plate. And you can see here, this is the perfect example of why you need a nine steps toolkit to work on your car, to do this with traditional L-shaped uh, L -shaped Allen keys would be virtually impossible and definitely not anywhere near as enjoyable. All while probably damaging the screw heads. Whereas this way we could take comfortably take this care car apart and put it back together a hundred times over without damaging any of the screws. Really good plastics on this model. The screws do up nice and tight. Okay, that is great news. Last thing we've got to pull off of the old servo, the faulty one, is in fact the servo horn itself. We're gonna repurpose that. The only thing to be careful of with servo horns is that the, the little spline on the back, A, is not damaged, and this one, this one wasn't, it was a servo itself that's failed, um, and that it is the same amount of teeth. There's two main sizes for the servo splines, and that's 25 and 23 teeth. And this one here, luckily enough, looks like a 25 tooth, which is what the highest is. There we go. So that slips straight on, pressed on the spline, and feels really nice and smooth, actually. Really happy with that. So I'm not gonna go ahead and put the screw on. Now, if that servo horn didn't fit from the kit, in the D300 kit here, I'll just open it up on my pit mat, is in fact a range of, there's three servo horns in the kit, and they can be, you can cut off the, the ears that you're not needing, um, three different ones, so you can even shape the circle one here just to be like a long, long point and to do various applications. We've got mounting grommets, and we've also got the, the mounting hardware in case your car doesn't have any but luckily enough we can repurpose all the bullet stuff um, and keep moving forward. So next thing I'm gonna do, now that it's all in, I'm gonna actually dummy up the, the wiring and plug it in and make sure that it, it is still working. And I'm gonna set the, the trim on the transmitter so that it's pointing nice and straight in case we need to take the servo horn off and realign it. So here we go, I'm gonna plug the Plug the car back in, turn the radio on, turn the speed controller on. That is beautiful. So straight away we can see that we've got beautiful movement in the servo and it looks nice and straight. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it on while I do up the, 
do up the steering linkage. There we go, that is definitely nice and straight, even going the right way. The last thing we'll have to do is the endpoints, but for now we can turn the power off and tighten up the screws and do up the servo horn so we can move forward. Okay, so I've got the servo horn screw here. That's nice and tight. That's nice and secure, so that's not going to slip. So now it's a matter of putting the top deck back on and just adjusting the radio. Okay, so now the top deck's coming down, what I like to do is put all the screws in first and just tighten them all nice and down evenly to ensure that there's no tweak or twist in the chassis. So I'll push it down here. Steering posts. And like I said, it has fantastic plastics, this, this bullet. So you can really feel when the, the screws do up nice and tight and firm. The plastic's not all rubbery and horrible that you can't feel when the screws are nice and tight. There we go, like so. Okay, so now we can put our little battery foam back in. And now we'll have a look at our final adjustments. Turn our radio on. Perfect, so what we want to do now is ensure that it is going left and right, which in fact it is. So now all that's left to do is we'll roughly have a look at the, we'll roughly have a look at the trim. Needed a couple of, a couple of clicks there. Then we can do the jewel rate, the end point. So I'm gonna simply put that on. Perfect, so we've got that going all the way, but in fact not too far that it's that it's binding and overloading the servo. Beautiful. So all we've got left to do is tidy up some of the wiring, which is as simple as just tucking it down here. I've already got some of my trusty uh, nine steps cleaning cement down there, which is a nice, Good little sticky aid helps keep the, the cables intact a bit. I've got my little gizmo tool here, which I'll use to poke the wire back. Like so. And the final test, and there we have a, a brand new replacement D300 steering servo in the VRX Bullet. Thanks for watching.